Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded just put out a video where him and Icy Mike are going through New York. They're asking random people to put some gloves on and try and punch Jeff in the face. And we just see Jeff just all over the place, slipping, slipping, slipping. And if you haven't caught that video, I'm gonna link it down below. But the important part of this video today here is I wanna teach you guys how to have head movement like Jeff Chan. I've watched many of his sparring videos, his breakdowns, and he's asked me to come and spar with him at some point. So obviously I went, oh, I wanna see what this guy can do and what I'm gonna be putting myself into. So when I watched him, one of the first things I noticed was, yeah, his head movement is pretty good. He's always throwing and moving and it's gonna be hard to tag him. I know when I go and do rounds with him, it's gonna be hard to tag him. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to get head movement like him. So everybody wants better head movement. You need to understand a few concepts before I get into all the points I wanna give you. First off, you can't have great head movement if your hands are up here. If you fight like I fight, hands high, you can't be moving your head around because the arms almost drag your head down. Once you drop your hands, now all of a sudden it's easy to move, but up here, your head is bigger, or the head target is bigger because your hands are high, but you also just feel sluggish in comparison. So if you're somebody who wants lots of head movement, but your hands are up high, you're gonna have to decide, no, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, or ah, I'm gonna drop my hands a little bit and test out what happens when these arms are lowered. And the other thing that you're gonna have to get used to if you want to get very good at slipping is you have to get comfortable with getting hit in the head. If you don't like getting hit in the head and you just rather guard up, I would suggest that. If you're gonna start trying to incorporate head movement into your game from the tips that I give you today, the way that Jeff Chan executes, you're gonna have to recognize, yeah, I'm probably gonna get tagged a few times, but that's okay, because guess what? Jeff gets hit as well. One of the times in the video he gets clipped. Overall, if you make people miss 90% of the shots and you get hit with only 10%, maybe that's a fair balance for you know, blocking 99% of the shots like this, but taking one, because you're still taking impact through those gloves. So let's move in to tip number one on how Jeff Chan gets such good head movement. And the first tip is he backs up. He backs up a lot. He'll be here and he'll be slipping, but he's moving backwards. Why is he moving backwards? Well, number one, it is so much harder for somebody to get good power when they're trying to chase. Moving forward, sucks away power to a certain extent, especially for people like in this video who don't know what they're doing. Maybe an advanced person will be like, oh, okay, I can use that momentum to push forward and gain power. But the average person, they're gonna hit hardest when they settle down and they can swing really hard with feet connected. As soon as there's movement, it's gonna draw away from that power. So what you can do and recognize, especially if you're trying to get very evasive for five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 shots in a row, get some backwards movement happening. That'll assist you and it's something that we see Jeff do all the time. The next tip is don't let your head go stationary. If you try to just go here, and slip every shot that comes, it's gonna be very difficult. When we see Jeff doing this, when he's having random people throw shots at him in New York, he's staying in motion. He's making sure that he's very difficult to find. If somebody can go, oh, his head's right there. Oh, he slipped, but his head's back there. It's gonna to be too easy. You want to be staying in motion with that head a lot. Occasionally they'll draw away or they'll get tired, then yeah, you can just rest here, but Head movement in general, just keeping it going, is so much easier. As soon as you stop and now you try and react, you're not in motion. So you're slower as opposed to always keeping that head mobile and then trying to move. Do not go stationary with your head. The next thing that we see Jeff do is he doesn't generally stop his legs from moving. His feet are on the go. Now we already talked about backing up, but sometimes as well, we'll see him slip and then we'll see him circle to the left or the right around people. Again, this is making him so much harder to find because people with gloves on can't just go, okay, he's here and I only have to make these small adjustments. Now they have to actually turn. And when you start turning and chasing, it becomes that much more 
more difficult. When I watch his sparring breakdowns on his channel where he's going against people who actually know what they're doing, he utilizes this very well. He doesn't run backwards as much. He's more side to side and it makes it very difficult for people to land techniques. Now you could be the best slipping expert in the world, Floyd Mayweather skills, but you still, just like Jeff has, you still have to have those hands as backups. You cannot just rely 100% on this. Occasionally you're gonna get tagged. You're gonna be like, oh shoot, I can't see anything because they just hit me. And yeah, I could try and open my eyes, but they might hit me with a second shot by the time I dial in. So what you wanna do is go, okay, occasionally, yeah, I gotta get my hands up and I gotta clasp them here and go to blocking and then return to slipping when I feel comfortable. It's that nice transition from hand defense to head movement. When you can flow from one to the other, then you start getting those skills like Jeff. Another little thing that we see Jeff do, which makes people, especially people who are not very skilled, really struggle, is he'll go very deep with his head movement. Instead of going small and back to here where he can work a quick counter, he goes really low, but he's not countering in this video. It's just people throwing at him. So when he gets really low, now they're going, okay, through, but now you're way down there or way down there. And now to get to you, they're gonna either have to move their feet or they're gonna reach way out of position. So sometimes overdoing the slipping motion can be very beneficial. We see Jeff do it. We see high level boxers do it sometimes as well. We'll see them, you know, they'll be here, they'll be working, they slip. And you're like, holy smokes, look at that squat on that guy. He gets so low. But the opponents are just struggling because they're so out of position and they're not used to punching at somebody's head way down here. So that is something that Jeff does, which you can try as well. And the last tip that I wanna give you that I see Jeff utilize a lot is he will crowd the distance between him and the puncher very nicely if he gets a little overwhelmed or if he sees the opportunity. So he might be here, he might be slipping away and then he'll step in, he'll put his shoulder to their torso now from here, when somebody's right in this zone, it's very hard for them to punch effectively and he can bump them backwards to create space. And you're also just safer there. There's such a thing as too close when somebody is trying to punch you. The head's right there, doesn't feel good. We want that sort of ideal range here. Right there, not so great. So if you're slipping away and you can push in and crowd the distance, you know back here, if the guy throws at you, you're gonna duck, and on this side you can use your hand, and you can just shoulder bump to create that extra space. Jeff does this very nice. If you take all six points and you combine them together, you might be able to build up some head movement like Jeff has, which is gonna be pretty cool in the gym when people start constantly missing as they're trying to tag you up above shoulder level. And like I said, guys, if you have not already, make sure you check out Jeff's video where he goes to New York and people try to punch him in the head. You might be thinking right now, Gabriel, we wanna see you do this. Head downtown, get people to try and punch you. It's not really my channel. Maybe at some point I'll do some sort of fun videos like that. Maybe go downtown and give people free low kicks on me and see if their shin gives up before my thigh or something like that. But yeah, it would be fun. I need to build out my comfort level, sort of putting myself out there in the public. It's not something that I've done a lot of yet, so maybe we'll see those in the future. If you think that's something that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. You can just give me that little extra push to get out there and make some more videos outside my little filming studio. If you haven't already, guys, join the channel, get subscribed. As always, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.